Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1383. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we've got a great video here. We want to talk about conditionally formatting a row with an OR logical test that has multiple partial text or contains criteria. Now, in our last video, Excel Magic Trick 1382, we actually extracted records with the same logical test. And someone below in the comments says, how do you do the same thing but to conditionally format the whole row? So here's row number one. We're interested in the job title. And we need to search through that job title. And if we find any of these text items or contains criteria, within that job title, the entire row needs to have some formatting like the color yellow. When we get down to this row, since that job title does not contain any of these text items, it should not get conditional formatting. Now, the trick to conditional formatting is that every single cell has to have a logical test to determine whether the formatting is applied or not. But notice if we're looking at the phone number, or date, or last, that's a cell that's different from the cell that actually has the job title. So when we're doing our formula, every single one of these cells is going to be looking at that job title. When we copy the formula down, a similar thing will happen here. Every cell here has to look at senior accountant. Now, I would like to be able to just highlight the whole data set all the way down. Go up to Conditional Formatting and pick a built-in feature to do this. But there is no built-in feature. So anytime you want to conditionally format a data set, as long as you can think up the logical test, it can be done. But we're going to have to use new rule and build our own logical formula that gives every single cell a true or false. Now, anytime I get into this situation, instead of highlighting and going up to the dialog box and building the formula up in the dialog box, I like to build it over in the cells off to the side, copy the logical formula over and down, and see if the patterns of trues and falses work. In our spreadsheet, visually checking the trues and falses, once it works, then I get that formula, copy it, highlight the range, and paste it into the dialog box. All right, so here's the logic. We need to check this one against all of these items, this one against all of these items. So I have a parallel range over here. In the top left cell, I'm going to use equals the search function. Now, search function looks for a particular text item within a larger text item and returns the position. So if search is looking for data, it'll count on its fingers until it gets to the 12th position. And it will report, I found data in the 12th position. Now, normally, we put one item into find text, but we're going to put a bunch of items into find text. Then I'm going to hit the F4 key because I'm copying it. Now, since we put seven items into the find text argument, that instructs search to spit out seven answers. And this is a function argument array operation, which means we're forcing the function to spit out multiple answers, comma. And what is the text we're looking in? For this row, cell F8. But guess what? There is an F8 relative cell reference, ID cell. That's the actual formula that will be copied in memory in that cell and copied over and down. So since the entire row needs to look at F8, I hit the F4 key one, two, three times, locking the F. So as I copy the formula to the side, F cannot move. But notice, when I copy down, it'll go from row 8 to row 9, because there's no dollar sign in front of the 8. Close parentheses. And now for this cell, I want to hit F9 to evaluate this. And there's my array of positions and errors. Anytime this array gets a position, we know that this record should get conditionally formatted. Now from this array, I want to get trues where there are numbers and falses where there are errors. So I Control Z with my cursor. After the equal sign, I'm going to use the isNumber function. 
This will return a true when there's a number, a false for anything else. Close parentheses at the end. F9 to evaluate. And there are the trues because it found two of these items in the first job title. Now, this is an OR logical test. If I get one or more trues, then I need to deliver a true to the cell. Control Z. The perfect function for that, of course, is the OR function. Now, I'm going to come to the end, close parentheses, F9. That's what I need, a single true in the cell, Control Z. Now, before we enter this formula, this is an array formula because we did a function argument array operation in that fine text argument inside the value and even inside the OR logical one argument. You always have to ask the question, can the argument that's holding the array operation perform this without the special keystroke control shift enter? And the answer for all of these is no. There's only five functions, lookup, index, aggregate, sum product, and chi square test that don't need the special keystroke. So you ready? Control shift and enter. Immediately we go up to the formula bar and we verify that the automatically entered curly brackets are in our formula. That's Excel telling you it understood and calculated it as an array formula. Now we can copy it over and down and look for our patterns of trues and falses. Record number one, record number four, and so on. I also like to go to the diagonally furthest one away, click in the last cell and hit F2 to verify that all the cell references are looking good. Escape. I come up to the upper left cell with our formulas. F2, and I'm going to copy this in edit mode. Control C, escape. Now I need to highlight the entire data set. So I highlight the first row. Control Shift down, I want to highlight all the way down. Control Backspace, because I want to jump back to that active cell. Now it's important that that's the active cell because we copied the formula from the upper left-hand corner here, and that formula was built from the point of view of that cell. Now I can go up to Home, Conditional Formatting, New Rule, or I can use the keyboard Alt-H-L-N. Now the option we want is use a formula to determine which cells to format. Notice the top item is highlighted, so to jump to the bottom, I'm going to either click or use Page Down. Now we need to paste our formula down here, format values where this formula is true. So I can either click or hit Tab. Now I Control V. There is our formula. Now wait a second. How do we enter this with Control Shift Enter? Well, guess what? Conditional formatting dialog box will totally understand it without any special keystroke. It will take that formula, and it will be as if it's in that cell. It will copy it over and down recognizing the patterns of trues and falses and formatting the cells. Format. You can format it from any one of these four tabs. I'm simply going to add yellow, click OK, click OK, and look at that. And of course, this is dynamic. If I come here and type Power BI, when I hit Enter, that formatting should go away because Analytics is no longer in this list. Control Z, but what if I want to add it to the list? Well, of course, I can come down here, Analyst, and Enter. And lo and behold, that does not get the formatting. Well, the formulas we built didn't have some fancy dynamic range in it, Control Z. But if we convert this to an Excel table, Excel table column ranges are dynamic. Even though we built our formula and it was only looking at the range J8 to J14, as soon as we convert this to an Excel table, the formulas will recognize it as a column in an Excel table. And when you add something down here, the formulas will update. Now, here's what we do. We click in a single cell. We make sure this is a proper data set. Field names in the top, records and rows, and empty cells all the way around. I go up to Insert, Table, or I can use the keyboard Control-T and Enter. Even though we don't need to worry about the name, I never like to have an Excel table without giving it a good name. Table, Tools, Design, Properties, and Table Name. I called it Contains, Criteria, and Enter. 
Now, when I come to the bottom here and type anything below an Excel table, it will automatically expand to include it in the table. Hopefully, I spelled it right. And Enter. There is Analyst. We can see that the table object expanded. And look at that. All right, now in this first example, we use this formula right here. I want to show you an even easier formula and learn something important about conditional formatting. Let's go over to the sheet 1383. Now we're still going to start our formula here with search. We're going to try to find any of these items. F4 to lock it, comma, within the job title for this row. So we have to F4 one, two, three times to lock the column, but not the row. Close parentheses. Now when we F9, there is our array of numbers and error values. Now instead of using is number and or, I'm simply going to look at this as a lookup range. And I'm going to look up to see if there are any numbers. Now, because there can be multiple numbers, and we always want to try and get the last one, I'm going to use the lookup function with approximate match, Control-Z. Hey, the lookup function I'm going to use is the first lookup function ever, lookup. This came before VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. This function only does approximate match lookup. Now, how do I always get the last number when we're doing approximate match lookup? Well, I give the lookup value some really big number that will be bigger than anything in that resultant array. So I'm going to use the big number, 2 caret 15, comma. Now, why 2 to the 15? Well, 2 to the 15 minus 1 is the maximum number of characters allowed in any given cell. So by putting 2 to the 15, it's guaranteed to be bigger than anything search can spit out. Because we're doing approximate match, it'll always find the last number. Close parentheses, Control, Enter, copy it to the side. And when we copy it down, we're going to get something unexpected. Well, look at that. We know that for every row that has numbers that are not zeros, means we need the conditional formatting. But what are we going to do about these errors? Well, the cool thing about the conditional formatting dialog box is that it will interpret any non-zero number as true, and it will totally interpret the errors as false. So that's all we need. Come to the top left corner, F2. We're going to copy this in edit mode, Control-C, Escape. Highlight the first row, Control-Shift-Right arrow, Control-Shift-Down arrow, Control-Backspace. There is the active cell. Alt-HLN, Page Down, Tab, Control-V. Click on Format, add some formatting. OK, OK, and there we are. Each row is conditionally formatted with a formula that was easier to create. We didn't have to use Control-Shift-Enter to enter it in the cell. And approximate match lookup formula like this calculates a lot more quickly than our search is number or formula. All right, so in this video, we saw how to conditionally format rows based on multiple contains or partial text criteria in an OR logical test. We saw how to do it with the lookup and search formula. And back over on this sheet, we saw how to do it with or, is number, and search. And we saw how to create an Excel table so that we can either expand or contract our criteria. All right, that's a lot of fun with conditional formatting and logical formulas. We'll see you next video.